Hello. We are continuing our series about typical mistakes in TOK essays, and this is episode number six. If you haven't watched our other episodes, do check them out, as well as all the other useful videos in our playlist. I will add a link to the playlist in the description below. We also have a TOK textbook and a full collection of fully developed resources, activities and 97 lesson plans for teachers. Imagine that a newspaper publishes pictures of several women, or men, and the readers are asked to select the one that is most beautiful. But the trick is, you get a prize if you select the face that was selected by most other participants. So, in other words, you have to choose the face that you think most other participants will choose, and not the one that you actually consider to be the most attractive. The great economist John Keynes described this game in 1936 and called it the beauty contest. He said that the beauty contest is very similar to what happens on the stock market. To beat the market, what you have to do is buy stocks, not of the companies that are actually likely to grow and make money, but those companies that most investors will be willing to buy, for whatever reason. If investors want to buy a certain stock, the price of this stock will go up, and if you're able to predict what other people will be trying to buy, then you can buy it now and sell later when it becomes expensive. In other words, wanting what other people want is a good thing, both in the beauty contest and on the stock market. But it's a bad thing in the TOK essay. TOK examiners mark hundreds of essays in the span of several weeks, so they read and mark at least 10 or 20 essays every day for the duration of a couple of intense weeks. And believe me when I say this, the overall impression is that most TOK essays are a grey mass of identical arguments, trivial ideas, and overused examples. This spoils the impression a lot. Usually when I'm dealing with an essay that demonstrates correct understanding of the essay title, develops a clear argument in response to this title, considers various perspectives and all that, but only includes typical arguments and counter-arguments that are also discussed in most other essays, and supporting examples that have been used by many other students, I know that this essay will most likely be given four, maybe five marks out of ten. I will give you some examples. One of the prescribed essay titles in May 2021 was Labels are a necessity in the organization of knowledge, but they also constrain our understanding. Discuss this statement with reference to two areas of knowledge. What are the first couple of things that come to your mind when you read and think about this title? If you are exposed to the same kind of information as an average human being, you will have the same kinds of associations. You will think about labeling someone as in stereotypes and social categories, for example, labeling someone as a feminist or a communist or binary gender labels. You might think about labeling someone as mentally ill, as in diagnostic categories in psychiatry such as the autistic spectrum or depression or social anxiety. If you try thinking about examples related to areas of knowledge, the most obvious one might be the arts, where you might say labels come in the form of genres or schools of art such as impressionism, realism, surrealism or even pop music, rock music and so on. And of course, in art, it can be argued that the work of art is usually so much larger than the label attached to it, just like any particular person is so much larger and more complicated than any label that the society might have given them. So if these are the things you think about, I predict you are most likely to get four, maximum five marks out of ten. All these examples and arguments are kind of obvious, they lie on the surface and they trigger the common associations, and precisely for this reason, the majority of your fellow IB students will write about these things, and precisely for that reason, your mark will be average. You should always go deeper than that, explore the less obvious, ask yourself more interesting additional questions. Ask yourself, can you think of examples of labels in other areas of knowledge? What would count as a label in natural sciences, and what would be an example of that? What counts as a label in mathematics and what's an example? If you challenge yourself in this way, you will realize that there are many less obvious but more effective examples hiding below the surface of the obvious. For natural sciences, for example, you might start thinking about classification systems such as Mendeleev's periodic table of elements, 
Mendeleev labeled various elements depending on their atomic mass, and this allowed him to not only conveniently categorize them, but to see patterns and predict the existence of new elements. Mendeleev will be a better example because it shows how labels can actually promote our understanding, rather than constraining it. Mendeleev is still quite an overused example though, so if you want to be slightly more original than that, just do a quick Google search on periodic tables and signs, and you will find, for example, the recently developed periodic table of elementary particles that served science pretty much the same function, allowing us to predict the existence of new quarks and leptons and bosons and other subatomic particles. The same reasoning applies to structuring your central argument. Let's read the title again. Labels are a necessity in the organization of knowledge, but they also constrain our understanding. The first thing that comes to your mind is probably, to broadly speaking, agree with the statement. It sounds sensible. Yes, obviously labels constrain our understanding by the very definition. In fact, even the connotations of our everyday use of the word label imply this idea, as in, don't label me, or I've been labeled. On the other hand, yes, obviously, labels are helpful in the organization of knowledge. We use taxonomies and hierarchies, such as biological species, schools of art, genres, historical periods, political regimes. Without them, our knowledge would be more chaotic and a lot more difficult to communicate. But then again, these are all exactly the thoughts and associations that dozens of thousands of other students will have after reading the title. And if you just speak about that, your work will become part of the big grey mass of essays that deserve average marks. So don't be like everyone else. In TOK essays, unlike the stock market, it doesn't pay off. Continue thinking about the title and explore aspects and dimensions that are not obvious at first sight. For the labels example, you can try asking yourself additional questions that kind of doubt the title or shake it up a little. So we agree that labels constrain our understanding, but do they always? Are there examples when labels do not really constrain our understanding? Are there examples when labels actually help us enhance our understanding or discover new knowledge? Further, it seems obvious that labels are helpful in the organization of knowledge, but are they a necessity in the organization of knowledge? Because the title says necessity, and it's not the same as simply being useful. Can you think of an example where knowledge can be organized without labels? Because if you can, then the statement in the essay title is wrong. If you can't think of such an example, then you can agree with this part of the title, but then what exactly makes labels inevitable? Is it good or bad? Is there any different way to organize knowledge? And is it different in different areas of knowledge? The overwhelming majority of people will see the essay title, have the immediate associations about it, and write down these immediate reactions. Few people will continue thinking and go beyond the first examples and the most obvious claims. If you're among these few people, the job is half done, and you're on the track to scoring a good grade in your TOK essay. In summary, don't limit yourself to the ideas and examples that other students are likely to use. Dig deeper, interrogate the prescribed essay title by asking yourself additional questions. If you haven't seen our other videos, make sure to check our full YouTube playlist. Apart from this series about typical mistakes in TOK essays, we have some useful stuff on the TOK exhibition, an explanation of key TOK concepts and other things. And obviously check out our TOK textbook and teacher resources such as the 97th fully developed lesson plans. All links are in the description below the video. See you next time!